Hello and welcome to Moon Crash Test Dummies. DJ Leo was tragically killed off. He was <laughs> struck by a plane. And now DJ Leo is dead. And I'm just regular Leo Vader. And I've got Jeff Marquiafava. Hey! And Ben Hansen with me. Hello, everybody! Hello. I don't understand our community sometimes. I did not expect this one to win. Yeah, we let Patreon supporters vote every single week for New Show Plus, what show we create. And yeah, for all the underdogs, the Moon Crash DLC for Prey, I did not think our community was going to be red hot on, but it's awesome that it did so well. Leo, what is this? This is Prey's Moon Crash DLC, which rearranges the hit mechanics of Prey into more of a rogue-y experience. Yeah, that's my understanding of it. Right, we're all going in pretty blind. I think I started it a little bit when it came out back in 2018, but it's fun to see like this groundswell of fans out there. They're like, no, 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 the Moon Crash DLC is an awesome slice, an awesome way to play the Prey experience. I think even JV Gwaltney on the last episode of the Mid Max show was was really talking about how cool it was. Yeah, I think it was just our Bethesda discussion last week that got everyone so psyched. For Bethesda's best games. Yeah. Uh, of which Moon Crash is one of them now. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah, we had the uh, Twitter poll uh, running over the weekend for the full Bethesda bracket to see, you know, people might not have liked our choices on the Max Show podcast. And so we had that Twitter poll. And uh, after a lot of interesting upsets, it turns out that Skyrim was Bethesda's best game, according to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it turns out, yeah. Like, yeah, it turns out it's, it's just Skyrim, everybody. You can only complain so much. Yeah. Now, Leo, what are you learning? I'm connecting some crap to this computer so that I can get in my simulation chair. Interesting. Now, Leo, Same what's thing your I did before the stream? With, uh, what's your history with the main prey? Played an hour or two. Didn't okay. grab me. Seems like a game I could get into. Feel like someday I will. And maybe this is my in. I was excited by the prospect that you don't need to be fa that familiar with the main game to get into this. Which is what JV promised. Don't let us down, JV. I like that the that janitor character is deep in the unlock. You gotta really work your ass off before you get to that cool one. Yeah. And I like that there are story objectives. Yeah. Okay, which I so haven't unlocked yet. Escape with the volunteer through the mimic portal to unlock a story objective. Psychic mimic. potential is my first character. I've got kinetic blast, super thermal, backlash, and burrow. And my main objective is, of course, to escape the moon. Always our prime objective. Uh, let us know in the chat if you've played this, what you think about it, if you have any hot tips for Leo here. I'm curious to see um, how challenging this is going to be and how much you're going to get your ass kicked uh, without understanding base prey very well. Well, I am a first-person shooter expert. Really? So hopefully those skills will carry wow. me. Certifiable, my god. Wow. But psychic abilities are a little less in my wheelhouse. Okay. Yeah, anytime there's fingers in front of the first person screen, you cannot really handle it well. Yes. I'm terrified. I don't think I need the key card and crew members tutorial. I think I understand key cards. Yep. Yes, yeah, swipe it in the door. Think about how many times you've used a key card in a game versus real life. Oh my god, I wish. I mean, we had key cards at Game Informer, but you didn't swipe them. You pushed them up against the thing. Yeah, I watched that mimic turn into a box. You're not fooling anyone. <gasps> not fooling, but still scaring Burn. everyone. <laughs> oh my god. Excuse me. My stamina is low. I'm bonking. I have bullets, but no gun, I think. But, of course, I do have my psychic abilities, I've been told, and I don't know how to use them. So that could be our first issue here. This is the problem with real life, too, is people tell you you have psychic abilities, but you have no idea how to use them. Yeah. I can keep Amanda. my wrench equipped? Mm. Amon's in the chat's doing a full arcane run. Interesting, on Game Pass, so... Just finished Dishonored, now he's gonna play Prey and Dishonored 2. That'd be really interesting. You'll be smarter at the end of that, Amonzo. That's cool. Alright. Little Typhon Gate. Let's go through the combat basics. <laughs> Cover mimics in snow. 
There you go. I'm just trying to quick find what my psychic abilities are. Yeah. Uh, that one dude says he got frustrated early on with the mimics and prey. Yeah, I get that. It's a really cool idea in the game, but I guess if you're not interested in trying to use a wrench to beat this chair that's lunging at your face, I guess I can understand that. If you don't like being terrified of every roll of toilet paper that you come across. Right. What is this? March. That's just how I live, baby. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Hi. So these mimics have special tumors that I can't take because I'm not smart enough. Yep. I need Pick necropsy. Them. I'm guessing I don't have my psychic powers yet and I can like pay to get them. Yeah, I think that seems fair. Have you tried putting the bullets into your wrench? I haven't tried. I could hit the b bullets like a baseball with my wrench. Yeah. Just straight down to earth. Right. Okay, this we got cool. some moon physics. Interesting. Moon gravity, a little Borderlands pre-sequel action for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think we talked about it on the podcast a while ago, like the best moon ever in a game. Pre-sequel's up there. Slice of Portal 2 is up there. Destiny, I guess, but, you know, it's it's not very moody. I don't think they have moon physics in the Destiny moon, am I right? Um, I guess, I think you always kind of have moon physics. Yeah, I think it's, al yeah. it's always a little floaty. Yeah. So I've got to Dr. Get... Chuck Brutmud says the achievements for the main game were great. They got me to play through the game with different builds. You really see how different playstyles affect the world and story. That seems like a good use for achievements. It's an arcane game. Yeah, you that's like the comfort zone. Yeah, best case scenario. I've marked some nearby Typhon. Those are the big bad guys. Those are ah! more mimics, I guess. What was that mimic doing? Just sitting around pretending to be a rock? On the moon for thousands of years? Couldn't pick something better? You could be anything. Wow, that is kind of funny that I uh, walked past all these mimics <laughs> and didn't realize they were mimics. So it just says mimic when you mouse over the rock then? Maybe only because I uh, had the had them marked from this little gizmo over here. Oh, okay. But we'll see, maybe you can just investigate them that easily in this. And we're looking for a mimic portal, is that what it was called? Sure. God, I'm not strong enough to carry any of this big stuff. Requires leverage. Hmm. Uh, brain freeze, yeah, it says the machine marks the mimics within a certain radius. Right. And General Shack says that you all are awesome. What? I think, I think he's talking about the chat, though. Ain't he? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, he is, though. Uh, Brain Freeze says you have to clear the area for certain doors to open. Makes sense. Gaming style. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have my games any other way. That's right. Oh, hell yeah. Triple wrench. <laughs> you can use them like spears. Just throw them. <laughs> it's very much my play style. That is a cool looking device. I like the little Medusa here. What the hell? Proximity warning? Is that a warning for my proximity? Remain five meters away at all times. Okay. And he's freaking nuts! What the hell? He's harvesting. What's happening in the background there? Back this way? Yeah, it just look a little bit glitchy or weird. Yeah, I don't know if that was something freaky. I just saw the health bar of something called Phantom. I'm not feeling great about that. Can you throw a wrench at him? I don't think so. Spooky things like to hang out by the spooky lighting. That's one thing we know for sure. Right. Herp. Moon physics, be quiet, my stupid feet. All right. Be still, my stupid feet. 
That one dude says, best video game moons, you get Dead Space 3, Majora's Mask, and uh, Wolfenstein, he says. That's a good list. Did oh, you guys what? see me stealth attack that guy? So good? I'm it very impressed. Thank you. It must suck to be a mimic and have a human sneak up on you. Yeah. You have like one job. Yeah. Like, You're not going to hear the end off. of that one. In hell. <laughs> An EMP oh charge. That looks great. That looks straight out of Dishonored. Yeah, for sure. I also like how they're one of the correct studios that knows you need to have sliding if you're making a first person shooter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so I visited Arcane. I visited all of them, actually. Well, both of them. Um, but the point is, uh, they have a weird studio mandate. They have a poster in Arcane Leon. Well, they have a bunch of posters for all of like their rules for the studio or kind of pillars of the studio. And one of them is no ladders, which is just fascinating. But they're like, we don't like areas of games that take powers and like verbs away from the player. And so anytime you're in a video game and you grab onto the ladder and you can't do your basic attacks and movements anymore, like we all think that sucks. So if you look at Arcane's games, there's very few, if any, ladders everywhere because they just hate that feeling, which is like a really surprisingly challenging thing to design for, especially like in a vertical space like Dishonored 1 and 2. That's really interesting. Uh, they can't They can't just make it so you can jump off the ladder? Well, you gotta climb back up, maybe. I just want them to make it so you can do cool stuff on the ladder as well. Yeah. Turn and yeah. shoot off it, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Some sort of trick scoring system. Requesting new operator. Yeah, you're kind of new. What the hell? Transdar Cobra 410 Engineering. Okay. Operator. Is this your buddy? Please stand clear. Inspecting. Your suit's leaking. Oh, it patches my suit. Great. Job done. <laughs> Can you just kind of like strap him to you and he can escort you around the moon? That'd be nice. What do we got in here? Oh. Power I'll look control. for uh, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic uh, in the chat from Dr. Chug Butt Mud. That seems, it seems like a very cool game. I know it definitely has its fans. I've just seen the highlights of the physics being very silly and blasting orcs or whatever around the world, which is, it looks hilarious. Yeah. That's what I've always been curious about. Whoop! No ladders. <laughs> I still can't do anything though. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. A cystoid nest. Scanning. Mirror imaging shows your psychoactive potential is at or near peak level. You probably hmm. didn't see me there. Mario Odyssey Moon. I feel like we've had this moon discussion. Yeah, I think we talked about it on the podcast a while ago and people in the backstage pass were correcting us as we went. But yeah, Mario Odyssey Moon is, is no joke. Uh, Arkham Asylum, <laughs> you don't go to it, but it's taking up at least a fourth of the sky at all times. Batman loves his moon. Do you think Batman's always looking at the moon like, come on, just put my sign up there? <laughs> Wait, he wants... So that's the ultimate goal for the, the bat symbol? It, it's on the it's probably like a huge power trip. Right. Like if, if you had your own personal logo, Hanson, mm -hmm. and then like the mayor of Minnesota put it up on the moon because he needs you so bad. Right. So if I just looked that's up gotta feel pretty good. one night and saw the Min Max logo on the moon and I knew that it came from the mayor of Minnesota himself. Yes. That would be that would be really empowering. I feel like there was... um. There was, I remember reading a long time ago that like Pizza Hut was trying to look into advertising on the moon and they had to sign some laws to be like, yeah, no go. But then I thought just a couple years ago, they like went back on that. There's something about something in moon news in terms of like advertising on it over the last couple of years, I swear. I mean, Leafeon also brings up, of course, when you're talking about moon levels, you got DuckTales on the NES just for the music alone. Yes, classic, classic theme. 
I was looking in my inventory to try to find how many shotgun shells I have, but of course it's on the side of my gun. That's awesome. Appreciate that. Thank you, aliens. Hmm. Not sure if I should get rid of this stuff. It's making me feel like some base prey knowledge might be helpful. Yeah. All right, I mean, the skate pod's right there. How hard can it be? Yeah, honestly. Walk over to it? I was trying to see more scary guys around here, though. And you haven't killed oh, one it's a corpse. Yet. No, I haven't dared. I should really be preserving my ammo. <laughs> Such a fun video game thing, but imagine if you actually had a wrench as a weapon, like, and holding it directly in front of your face like that, like where they're holding it, just walking around the moon. Yeah. It. Oh, I knew it! I knew it! I just didn't know it could be an item you picked up. I saw it slide <laughs> over, but... <laughs> okay, here's the real one. Yeah, that one dude is right. Borderlands pre-sequel wasn't a fun moon, the whole oxygen mechanic. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's okay. I don't think the real moon would be that fun either, if we're being honest. Oh, God! Needles in the eye! Ah! Don't do it, Leo! Oy. Here you go. He's really into playing with that, like that idea of like, well, I gotta put a needle in my eye, so let me just flick it and really tease it a while before I jam it in. Yeah, if you were using a wrench as a weapon, I also don't think you would flip it like every 30 seconds, just to... <laughs> well, if you're on the moon, I think I would constantly be throwing stuff in oh, the air. It does seem yeah, very... that, that might be true. Zap with my stun gun. Doink. Is that doing it? Uh, I might be zapping the wrong thing. Type of material detected. Hmm. Maybe I should just go get this Typhon. It's mm, yeah. tracking for me. Watch it. Um, when we visited Arcane uh, Austin. Uh, it was very fun. They had post-it notes that said the word mimic on it, and they just like put it everywhere. So it's just like a stapler on somebody's desk, and it's a post-it note that says mimic. Or like the bell at the front desk would say mimic. It's very fun. Real hoot. I bet that got old, though. You think they just did that because you guys were visiting? I'm sure. Look, <laughs> I, would never, I would never put it past them, yeah. It really set the mood for us. And then we lost Matt Miller to a tragic mimic attack, actually. At the toilet. Yep, it was the toilet the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Energy it. blast! Yeah! That's pretty good. Come back. You're the Psyduck of Prey. <laughs> Thanks, man. They should change the name of this game to Predator with the way Leo plays. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brain Freeze says you can zap the scanner to trick it into thinking you got all the Typhon. That's interesting. That's really weird. Ended up just not being that hard to actually go get it. There we go. Alright. Uh oh. Well, the idea was there, Leo. Thank you. That's cool. surprisingly I like effective. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm not supposed to be fighting everybody I see, though. Oi! That's cool. Yeah, it is. Take this with me. Maybe I can loot in here. Finally. But you can only pick up things that are under half a pound. Right. Is that Earth weight or moon weight, though? Oh, man. Imagine how light we'd all be on the moon. <laughs> Jeff, I'm 
um, if NASA came to your house tomorrow and said, Mr. Mark your father, sorry, Mark your father, we need you to be on the next lunar voyage happening in three years. We're willing to pay you $90,000. Would you do it? Would you? I love how you always lowball the numbers. No, <laughs> I'm not going to the moon for the last time. You really wouldn't? No. Why? Am I going to leave my child when he's three years old to go to the moon? You don't want to give him the story that his dad was an astronaut, that his dad died doing what he loved on the Yeah, moon. precisely. Flailing wildly for oxygen. If they offered me to go on the moon or take $90,000 and not go on the moon, I would go on the moon. Really? Big old moon fan. That'd be sweet. But it would also just be a lot of bureaucracy, it'd be a lot of training. You'd probably have to go back to like math classes realistically. It'd be a lot of just like basic science work, like shaking two test tubes together and whatnot. But no matter what, you just want to stand on the moon. Yeah. And say, look at me. And be the first to... Be in your suit while standing on the moon. In your suit. No, someone's already done that for sure, right? Oh my God, absolutely. That's you think while they were actually standing on the moon, though? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't know. I bet they probably just did it just to do it, right? Yeah, I bet they joked about it. I'm sure we have recordings of that stuff. First guy who farted on the moon? Yep, absolutely. I want to be the last guy who farted on the moon. <laughs> I want to fart so hard I blow up the moon. Guys, uh, I beat did it. Just, did you just win, Leo? Yeah, yes. Wow. Why are you so good at this? Escaping more than once in the same run yields increasingly larger sim points rewards. Your ultimate goal is to escape with all crew members in one go without resetting the simulation. Interesting. 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 All right. Well, I mean, you've shown yourself very capable. Jeff and I wouldn't have gotten out of that first room. We would have been peeing on the moon the whole time <laughs> and farting. So Ugh. Much which just alerts all the Typhons. Mm-hmm, yep, my fart would be a mimic. Um, have you guys watched that CNN documentary called Apollo 11 yet? No. It is so freaking good, Leo, or Jeff, um, or anybody watching. Um, I don't know where you could stream it now, but it's all just like perfectly cut together archival footage uh, from the first trip to the moon. Like never before seen footage, but they also just like match the audio recordings to the cameras and stuff. So if you just love documentaries without talking heads, where it's just like, here is just raw what happened. Yeah. Working it up to that point, it is amazing have you guys seen the uh the challenger documentary on netflix no that one's real good if you want to completely destroy your vision of what nasa is and how they're all like super smart scientists that you know like always do the right thing and yeah because it, it's it's just a it, it's like a five part thing or something like that. And they really walk through how like basically every single NASA mission, like they know that there's things wrong and that their shuttles might explode, but they just go ahead with it anyway. Because oh, wow. They, they have they have like what they call like known risks or, you, or like basically problems that they have already identified, but decided that they're just going to go along with it anyway. But at the same time, if you're traveling in space, what do you want them to do? Wait until there's zero known risks? Well, they could also tell, they don't tell the astronauts though. Yeah, I don't know. Am I a callous, crazy person to be like, well, why worry the astronauts? Like they, that's not their job is to have a percentage in their mind of when they'll explode. Right? <laughs> well, they could say, oh, I don't want to do it then. And then well, they, survive. Yeah. They know it's risky. They want to do it. I, I just don't know if telling them there's a 17% chance it will explode will do anything. No, I mean, like, with the Challenger, though, it was like they have, like, these gaskets on, you know, like, the insides of the, you know, rocket or whatever. And they were burning through them, like, consistently. And they knew that that was a problem. And then, like, the day that they launched, it was, like, freezing cold. So the entire outside of the shuttle was like encapsulated in ice 
Yeah. And they knew that that also like makes the you know like these little rubber rings even the, worse. Yeah, the over and like all all of the engineers on on who were like on these calls were like, we absolutely can't launch. Like this is going to be catastrophic, and they still went along with it anyway. And they didn't tell any of the astronauts that like this was a huge problem, yes. and then yeah. it exploded. I had a rude awakening awakening for NASA where. It was 60 minutes, maybe last week or two weeks ago. But it was interesting because it was talking about um, their new initiative to land on the moon and specifically to put a woman on the moon, which is led by like a lot of women at NASA, which is interesting. Um, and it, it's one of those things that they say is coming up sooner than we think, like within the next couple of years. Where it's like, uh, we'll see, okay. But the crazy thing is they have, God, I forget who the spokesperson was, but I think she had left NASA and she was just so flummoxed by like, hey, all of these private companies making their rockets, like we need to just use that. It's cheaper, it's safer, it'll save the taxpayers billions of dollars. But at the same time, uh, NASA is being forced to create their own space shuttle for these projects. And it's just so that the senators can brag about, you know, building a space shuttle in their home state and to, I guess, create jobs, but it's just so frustrating to hear like NASA people, people very in the know, just be like, this clearly does not make any sense. Logically, we should be using these private companies. We don't need to be doing this, but it's just because the Senate, some idiot in the Senate wants to get reelected that we're forced now to do this incredibly inefficient thing. Uh, the, the series is called Challenger, the final flight, Hanson, and you should watch it. And then we can revisit your question of whether you're just callous or not okay thank you yeah whether your astronauts deserve to die i think was your mm -hmm. was the question right right yeah because one of them like and it, it really sucked because it was like that that mission specifically was like hey we're gonna we're gonna make space much more diverse and we're gonna hire all these different people who aren't you know like typical astronauts yeah. including one who was like a an elementary school teacher that yeah. was that was like this is the first civilian that we're sending into space. Mm -hmm. ah! Well, there's the second. <laughs> <Where? laughs> yeah, and then the, the most devastating part is her classroom was watching. Yes. Oh, oh Along with millions of other students around, because that was back when they used to actually, when it was a big deal, like space missions were a big deal, and they used right. to, everyone used to watch them. Goose. Oh, this can you DJ. imagine Listen to me. around the country you just trying to, to explain what you just surface. saw? I repeat, do like, what do you just turn the TV off? Like, the hey, who wants to recite the Pledge of Allegiance again? Here we go, from the top. One, two, three. <laughs> this will cheer you up. <laughs> yeah, they also have lots of, of footage of that, of like people, the, you know, like everyone who was watching it at the launch site and, and just like, but like no one really knew what happened, you know, because they're so far away and like NASA didn't make any announcements for a long time. This has become a weird conversation for this yeah, game. I, I'm more fascinated by the concept of a moon shark. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> he was really doing some damage to you. Yes. What do you think named that thing? Oh, it can do a ranged thing. Do you have psychic goodies? Do you have any anything good to lob his way? I can summon a turret companion. Can summon a, li a little lure. Well, you seem pretty safe in here. This could just be your new moon home. Yeah. Over there! It's sure. lured! Smile, you son of a... Oh. I'm bleeding? I need to get oh somewhere God. safe and bandage up. Oof. Boy, do ya. You got all you need? Shove a bandage in your eye? I don't think I have a bandage. Hopefully a med kit does the trick. Um, if you haven't noticed, this is clearly the same world I was just in. Like, all the people I killed, their corpses are still around. Oh. Weird. So is it always the same world, then, I wonder? Or is it, like, randomized per run? I'm pretty sure it's randomized per run, or maybe it's just what you can do is randomized per run, like the escapes that are available to you. Yeah. Uh, Leo, you need to find a bandage fast, dude. I know! Unless you can just really sprint your way for the exit. <laughs> oh, Leo! 
What happens when you die? You need that robot guy. Yeah. He can pass you right up. Oh my god. Okay, so it's when I run I take damage from my bleeding? Or maybe I've met, gone past the maximum point of bleeding damage I can take. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Wait, when, yeah when I run, it does damage. Oh, okay. All right, just a slow go for the rest of the mission. That seems doable. Uh, Spencer says the run resets completely after you die as all survivors. Okay. Dusty Gray Foxes, if the bureaucracy doesn't get you, the moon sharks will. <laughs> Very true. Well, yeah, it's all a metaphor for the same issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leo, would you go on a mission to the moon? Ooh, cool. Oh, last of us. Um, if there was a 30% chance you'd die? No. 15? No. Five. Five's pretty low. Five is pretty low. Ah, don't be uptight. It's gotta be... It's probably greater than five. Oh, for sure. For sure it is. But you just said you'd go to the moon, Leo. Oh, that's a good point. You got me. You got that's me. A good point. That's dangerous. I probably would. Also, it's uh, not like, you know, when we've got space travel that anyone can do, right? You can buy a ticket to go to the moon. It's not going to be like, yeah, you know, one in 20 of these will blow up. Right, right. Eh, I still think enough rich people would probably go for it. Jeff, and where do you stand on that classic debate of enough with the moon? People are suffering on the earth, eh? Yeah, that Irish <laughs> idiom. Do you think it's still important to try and get off Earth? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, ironically, I like it from the NASA standpoint of like, this is about the science and advancing science. Mm -hmm. I'm less cool on the Elon Musk of like, I have billions of dollars, but I don't want to invest in making the earth better i want to start my own colony on mars where i can be king of mars <laughs> i don't know if that's his goal that's but, his goal that's his goal he, i mean having a colony established on another you know sphere planet like that is a net benefit for humanity right compared to just most billionaires just dying with their money or passing on to their kids isn't it helpful to be like eh, we're gonna blow this guy's money I guess it would help to have a colony established for when Earth gets is hit it, by a meteor. Is it a Tesla colony, though? What does that mean? Tesla brand. I mean... That that it's Tesla's maybe. colony and they can do whatever they want up there? Maybe. Would I mean, you rather have a company colony or put all your eggs on the Earth basket? I'm fine with a company colony if that's our only option here. You're not, you're, they're not going to take you to their company colony, though. What do you Hansen, mean? Unless you're like, the stream. unless you're an ore slave. <laughs> I will, honestly, I've applied to be a Tesla ore slave 14 times and they keep rejecting me. It's, it's just that there's Sad. a rhythmic part that I can't quite get through. Where is the moon? <laughs> Up. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep. Cool. Oh my God. I was so close to dying. Holy! I got down to God. three health. You got a plan for that? No. <laughs> and you know the next med pack you see is going to be a mimic. I know it. And I don't have a map for this region. I don't think. I know there's a key card that would get me into a room with some good stuff, but I don't have access to it yet. Mm, this is cool. I'm glad the environments are like standard prey stuff and not just kind of the the moon base aesthetic. Yeah. It's a very cool place to explore. Great art. We got great art here. Oh, okay. I'm drunk. As somebody who gets uh, nauseated easily while playing games, like anytime I have the option to drink, it's always a hard pass because it just makes everything so much worse. <laughs> Although that one didn't look too bad. Just like shook the screen for a second. Yeah, I'm sober now. Keycard cocktail lounge storage. Uh, yeah, WM Ben wants you to know that you picked up a key card from the last corpse. Sweet! I hope it's the right place. Okay, so when you're drunk, bonus physical damage, reduced stamina, blurry vision, stumbling. 
Mm. I'm well fed, so I've got increased health regen, increased stamina recovery. And I'm bleeding, so I take extra damage, and sprinting, jumping, and climbing cause damage. Leo, that seemed like your type of screen. You know I love to read crap like that. 100%. <laughs> what do you think of this thing so far? It's interesting. It seems like the exact kind of, uh... There's some cool stuff about Prey, but I don't want to commit to the whole single-player campaign. Right. It seems like a good way to dive in and just have some of those emergent gameplay, immersive sim stealth type of moments. Yeah. Is there one that helps my body be less broken? <laughs> Jeff, when was the last time you got uncomfortably drunk? Uh... I think my wedding. Ooh, yeah. What was that like? Because it was, it was super drunk. It was like a whole cultural thing where you couldn't stop drinking. <laughs> and I that that was that is the only time in my life when I have actually seen like I had like double vision. Really? Yes. Wait, what do you mean? It's a cultural thing. You can't stop drinking. It's, it's like <laughs> among ceremony of. Like all the all the kind of like m men from the families sit at a big table and they pass around shots. This was also pre-COVID, so it's it doesn't exist at this point. Uh, but it's like they they pass around different alcohol and give speeches and stuff like that. But it's like if you just, if you are the groom specifically and you're marrying into the family, uh, you don't stop drinking until you pass I out. Wait, did you pass out? Uh, we we were well. The the dinner had ended at that point, and you're you, like, once like kind of all the ceremony stuff is over, people continue drinking, but the the groom and bride actually leave the house, and so okay. we were allowed to leave. That must be really fun to like when you realize you're gonna marry your wife, and then be like, okay. What is this wedding going to be like? What are the customs I have to take into account here that I did not expect to have to deal yeah, with? Yeah, it, it it was like I had I had everyone in her family warning me for months leading up to it that it was going to be rough. <laughs> Build but, up but it, your it, tolerance. Yeah, but <laughs> but there there was a nice point during it, you know, where I was already completely drunk, but it like you you i could understand why it's a tradition because you could see that the two families had come together and basically all the guys in my family were drunk and all of they were drunk and you, everyone was having a good time and you know talking much more than they probably would have and getting to know each other and you know yeah. like i looked over my dad was like you know like arm in arm with one of her uncles and they were both completely wasted and it was like oh this wow is, this is a nice like I'm not a I'm not a huge wedding guy, so that was like kind of the perfect wedding for us because it was right. different and not, you know, some very uptight formal scenario you know, a ceremony or anything like that. Totally. So, but I have not I have not really drunk since then. Really? Happily. That was it. That was yeah. like, you know, being forced to smoke a full pack of cigarettes as a kid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh my god. This is cool. Yeah, that's this character's ability is dropping that turret, and it kind of didn't fire at my enemy. Maybe I dropped it too late. Uh, big old uh, Grant, star of Hitman 3, uh, he gives eight months. He says, hey fam, take my free Bezos bucks. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. For uh, realizing you got those sitting around. If you got Amazon Prime, you got that sub to throw away, so we appreciate it. Not throw away, throw it up. Invest in yeah. MinMax. Not throw away, it's throw home. Throw home, Jack. Ooh. Speaking of throw. Oh. No! Ah! My worst nightmare! <laughs> Throwing you for a loop! This silence pistol is good. Oh no! God, they know exactly what you want to do. That's hilarious. Yeah. Did I do it? Thanks, what am I looking at that's being called a black sparrow? It's alarming. Maybe it's the rival basketball team. Now, Leo, I don't know if I was really expecting better basketball skills, but come on, man. What is this? Middle school? 
Hopefully different characters have different basketball skills. <laughs> but this one can't throw very far. Yeah, the problem he's making on the court is insisting on holding his pistol. Did that go in? No, it did not. No. <laughs> they just gave it to you at a certain point. <laughs> Scooter died doing what he loved. Trying to play basketball. I need to find a way to get rid of some of my stuff. I can just drop it, but I don't really know what's important. This banana peel, you know, it could come in handy. Pew Gotcha says, I didn't know you get a free sub with Prime. Easy day. Yes, thank you. Thank you for throwing your easy day our way. Uh, Starkiller asked, Ben, how drunk did you get at the infamous Dan Taco Bell wedding? Um, I'm not a huge drinker, but uh, yeah, it's definitely some booze flowing. But the tricky thing with that was that, um, well, well, specifically it was like his, his bachelor party the night before where I think I got a little bit drunker. But the tricky thing there is we ended the night by bungee jumping off of one of the buildings in Las Vegas, but they only let you do it if you were sober. So <laughs> I've been drinking a lot for hours and hours and hours and hours for this bachelor party. And then it was like, all right, game time, everybody. Everybody needs to pretend that they're 100% sober so we can still jump off this building. Uh, and we did it. I mean, it's Vegas. I'm sure you'd have to be stumbling in order to not get over there, but. Yeah, that's funny. They don't like have you do a breathalyzer. Right. They clearly don't really care. No, they just don't want people being completely out of line. Like, I've got this, and they just jump off with the harness half on and all that stuff. But yeah. That was a very fun feeling. Where, like, the rope catches you, you know, when you're, like, halfway down or something. But, like, it really is a weird thing just to be standing on the edge of a skyscraper downtown and be like, all right, this is the point when I just jump off. It's really crazy. That and sounds a little, amazing. A little booze definitely helps. Uh, Oozing Neon said, asked, did they have Boozy Baja Blast at the wedding? I don't think so. Oh. Um, yeah, they really, really let us down. I was just talking about that wedding, but the weirdest part was everybody was serving, like, delicious, like, the most delicious versions of Taco Bell food you can imagine. And everybody serving the food was suspiciously hot. <laughs> it's like, why is everyone so attractive here? So at a certain point, I asked one of the guys, I'm like, where are you from? Uh, like, do you work for Taco Bell? And he's like, no, 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 we're actors from L.A. that Taco Bell paid to come out here and serve you guys food. <laughs> <laughs> How to work actors oh. to serve us, you know, some jalapeno nachos and nonsense like that. It was great. So Taco Bell made better food, better versions of their food? Yes, they had specifically, um, there was just like little slices of a jalapeno quesadilla that was delicious. Uh, and then I found out that it's not served anywhere in the store. So it was just something like the chef whipped up in the back of this wedding. So. Not exclusive. Dad, I have to be careful not to run in this situation. Because you're already bleeding? Yeah, my body will just fall apart. <laughs> That's a good test of your courage. Oh, I like the little baby flying at you. Okay, turret. Wow! Not there bad. You, you bashing that turret. Shame on me. Why are you shaking so much? Fear? Fear. Delay loop time. Please explain that to me. Thank you. An abstract item representing a loophole in the system which you may exploit to temporarily slow corruption in the simulation. That's interesting, because I think, yeah, in the upper right we've got my corruption level. I think that's why I found that robot that was, uh corrupt instead of in a mode where it would help me is because the corruption level was increased mm. i like your um fortnite branded crossbow that's pretty cool thank you such a weird color scheme for that thing you're not weird just your crossbow's weird leo i understand okay can fabricate some crap One glue cannon, coming up! Do you already have a glue cannon? Yes, I don't have any ammo for it, though. Hmm. Remember, that was the coolest thing in this game, is with the glue cannon, like, spraying the walls, and you can, like, make your own staircases to, to get around. Yeah. Like, each reversal like that is such a sweet idea. Uh, that one dude, 702, is jumping in the chat to say, hey, this seems kind of rad. 
it's seeming rad to me so far. I'm kind of with ya. I'll throw some of that crap in there. Recycle that. Yes! I feel like Ooh. I'm in Vegas! <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I'd like to exchange these for just more money than you could possibly imagine, please. So I think I just want more bullets for my silenced pistol at this point. It's remarkably useful, the silenced pistol so far. Okay. I've been one-shotting some mimics here. Also, I love this. Like, this is such a cool visualization of crafting. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, is this on the, um... Is it just Prey that's in Game Pass now? Does that include this? Good question. I'll look it up here. Jeff, have you looked into the Bethesda stuff? You're a big Game Pass guy. Have you downloaded anything old here? Uh, I... I downloaded Morrowind. I haven't started it yet. Okay. But our last conversation made me want to go back and see how terrible it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but then I... I downloaded the original Doom. Oh, wow, yeah. Just to, you know, see how it plays, I guess, with a... I, I don't remember the last time I played it with a controller. Uh, but one thing that I didn't realize that they did with that is they included some, like, downloadable user content that people oh. had made. And so, like, John Romero had an entire chapter that he had created, yeah. you know, like, a couple years ago. Right. And they had they had some uh, like community ones that like big people from the community had come together and created like total, you know, conversion mods and stuff like that, that yeah. you could skim through and download them. That's so awesome. I tried a couple I of those. That they have that just, in there. Yeah. Didn't you check that out before? Um, that was that was different. That was I don't I don't know if he made this after that, but yeah, there was one level that he kind of created when he was going to kickstart a project that right. I played through and talked to him about. Oh, nice. Pretty uh, cool. Dandy Dante Gameplay comes in and says, Howdy, y'all. Howdy, Dandy! Howdy! Howdy! Uh, God's Garage says, Are the cohorts the test dummies? Or is there some fun pun I'm missing here? <laughs> what are you talking yeah, Yes, we're, we're the, the dummies. We're the dummies. We don't know how to play the game. It's right we're there. testing Moon Crash. Plus, Jeffum's gonna sing that hit song from the Crash Test Dummies. Take it away, Jeffum! Mm -hmm. What I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the. Uh, it really made me laugh hard one time when we were singing karaoke at some karaoke bar in Minneapolis, and Ronnie got up to sing. Best friend Ronnie from Deepest Dive, Promising Seven, and all that stuff. Um, and he chose as his song <laughs> that mm -mm song from the Crash Test Dummies. And it's such a funny choice for karaoke because everyone's like really belting it out. They just have somebody go up there and the most they have to strain their voice is once there was yeah. a girl who... It's just the easiest song of all time. It's great. It's easy to sing and it makes everybody happy. Well, mainly because we all just like Dumb and Dumber. And yeah. Dumb and Dumber too. So this is the stuff that... Uh, Persists between runs, I believe. These skill oh, okay. trees. They persist per character between runs. Interesting. I don't know about chip sets, though. I don't think they do. But I got one that means every time I complete an objective, the reward I get is bigger. I still have to EMP a security operator with my EMP charge. I don't really know what a security operator is, though. Is that one of those flying robots? Is, wait, is that a lightsaber? Butter yes, thing? I got a lightsaber. Stop talking about it, Jeff. Um, it's the moon. It's weird, okay? On the damn moon. I mean, this is... This is oh, weird. engineering. It says operator there, so... There you go. I don't have an EMP, though. Besides that, would have been a great situation to achieve my objective. So the percentage on the weapon that's... um. Uh, durability. Type and material detected. Yes, okay. it is. Where'd my turret go? Imona was one two three says, "Hey from Pakistan, it's sleepy time here, so bye bye as well." Ah. Wow, 
for watching Hello Pakistan. and goodbye. Tell us a fun fact about Pakistan before you go. Don't go to sleep yet. Don't go to sleep yet, please. Uh, did that do it? Yeah. Wow. Pretty good. Thank you. We're Saving supposed to be the dummies, Leo. You're yeah, ruining the you're title of the good. Stop control. it. Yeah, sorry, damn. We didn't think that through. Why are they all dying in, like, Pompeii poses? Is this like Very a glue grenade point. I've got here? Oh, weird. Cool. And you can still use it to make climbable platforms and extinguish flames. Yeah, I really appreciate when a game has, you know, here's a new little gadget and there's ten ways to use it. It's useful right. for a ton of different things. That rocks. I think I might be about to beat it again, though. God. I believe in you. Andy Ooh. Valentes really appreciates us from the Game Informer days. Uh, he just wishes that he wasn't broke so he could support us on Patreon. That's fine, Dandy. Just uh, tell a friend about our content. or A rich friend. Or yeah, tell your richest friend about our highest tiers on Patreon. <laughs> That's all we could ask. Oh, we man. You. Yeah, if you know... Um, Who's the guy we were just talking about? Mr. Man? Tesla Man? Elon? Elon yeah, Musk. Big Elon. Um, that or go to the moon and get paid $90,000 to do it. Yeah. And then you're set. That's it. You got it all. Imono I, Waz123 says our prime minister name is Imran Khan. So In Pakistan. That is a the fun one right. fact we knew. Wasn't he like a soccer star? Did, is that the same Imran Khan then? He got elected to be prime minister over there? Look, this is. Who important. can say? What's important is Lauren Ladd and the horrific way she had to die here. Oh, she was so close. I know. Really, right there. I feel like <laughs> Darth Vader is going to come out of this hallway at any moment. All right. Crap just got more corrupt. Oh, Lewis was even closer. <laughs> Inching towards the cockpit. Ew, he's moving! Ew! Oh, don't move the body! This is so Realistically, if you were if you guys were in this scenario though, you would pull those corpses out before you left, right? Oh, to, yes, I wouldn't want them bouncing around in zero G. Yeah. What? Yeah. But I mean, even even like with all those scary monsters out there, I, I would totally take the extra five minutes and drag all those bodies out of there. Mm -hmm. Moonface Nick, thanks for the big sub on Twitch. Hey, oh, and for supporting us uh, on Patreon and getting your picture of the Mall of Heroes. We appreciate it, Moonface Nick. Charming qualities. He does his own Twitch streams. Yeah. Appropriately oh titled God. for today's stream, too. Oh my God, Leo and Jeff, I didn't even think about that. We've been on Nick's face the whole time. Oh, <laughs> oh it hurts. I really thought you'd get to fly that ship, Leo. Yeah, you have to find a uh, piloting ship set, apparently, which is oh. awesome. That's very interesting. That's really cool. So More neuromods, your, please. I hear that. Is that your main ticket out? Um, okay, that is. A, yeah, I can track that now. I can also find an easier way to escape, probably. What's going on here now in the chat? We got X Y Bazalu nine twenty three saying two a m here in Taiwan. Just wanted to pop in and say hi bye. We've okay. gone international, folks, <laughs> and they are not interested. We've done it. Yep. In well, interested around. enough to at least do a pop-in, which is People nice. People around the world are saying, fine, thank you, I'd rather go to sleep, and <laughs> we can ask for anything better here at Minmax. You get us. Oh. I'm looking for someone specific, right? So I can find them on this crew list? That's so interesting. That is Angela interesting. Wagner. Yeah, I remember um, people in the backstage past when we were talking about this game... We're talking about like, oh, I wonder if they learned some lessons just about like kind of the roguelike nature of it um, that they could incorporate into Deathloop, where it's, you know, technically the different Arcane designed it. But actually, I don't know. Maybe Arcane Leon made this DLC. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to see when that game comes out, if there are some direct lessons from this thing. Uh, 
I've got a new ability where I can make this robot work with me. Wherever it is. Yeah! Nice. They're taking over this moon, man. This is your world. They're just living in it. True. I hope I find a bandage someday. Doesn't that look like a bandage? Is that not what that is? It's probably a mimic. You just don't understand. <laughs> I think I might just need the right workbench to heal my body. Hmm. Uh, by the way, I checked it. Uh, people are quite bummed that of all the things Bethesda dropped on Game Pass, Moon Crash is not one of them. Sorry, everybody. That is too bad. That's how they get you. Uh, Grant is wondering where everybody's hype levels are at for Deathloop. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about it. I, I definitely want to check it out. I'm rooting for it more than I want to play it, I think is where I'm at for that thing. Sure. I'm very hype. I am too. Especially since they said that you can turn off having the other person come into your game. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, like, that's going to end up being the best Dishonored player jumping into your game, and that would, you would just totally wreck me. Yeah. Or a little kid who wants to troll you and isn't actually and good. Or a little kid, me. yeah, who is really good and wants to troll you. What a freaky room. <laughs> hissing away. This is a cool office, though. 0451, Leo, don't be an idiot. Come on. That's a good guess. Hey, I just wanted to congratulate you on having such a good safe code, which is, of course, 8521. No one pick us like you, dear. <laughs> so, I bet I could uh, go track down Alex Yu if I find him in the registry. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder how much of a bump um, Deathloop's going to get just from people really hungry for new stuff for their PlayStation 5 as well. Like, before Ratchet comes out, it's really all we got at this point. Yeah. Um, I imagine a lot of people will be interested in kind of pushing PS5 to some limits there. I'm stuck. I don't think you want it hard enough. Oh, there we go. And then we'll open it back up, and there we go. Quick little hoppity poo. Oh, hello. I'm maintaining good health. Careful never to sprint. No matter how scary things get. I want these two to be next to each other so I can mind hack them at the same time. Oh. Dink donk, dink donk. Let me do this one first. Oh my god. Oh, cruel and unusual punishment for your little buddy. <laughs> Great sound. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> what All right. a terrifying charge move. <laughs> Angela. Hello. Tram, please. Oh, control uh, modules. I oh. Uh -oh. Last time I I needed a bunch of them. Now I got too damn many. Ain't that the way it goes? Come on in, Angela. You're alive, right? Can't wait to see my baby. <laughs> I'm guessing she's in Moonworks. Uh, I don't know. Her connectome. Oh, Ben J. Mark says those are the ones you put in there, I think. Right. But, yeah, that happened to have them filled in already. But that seems like a random element. Maybe it won't. Yeah. Some Who knows? Who knows? Cool art. It's interesting playing a game with roguey mechanics that is a pretty first-person shooter. Immersive right. sim thing, you know, it's a genre that hasn't super made it out of the indie space yet. Yeah, it seems like the AAA space is still like, ah, we'll save that for our DLC. Some weird experimental stuff. But oh, for sure. That is interesting. I mean, I guess Deathloop is kind of a big push there. 
That's true. That's a great point. <gasps> I finally made one. You did it. <laughs> Guys, it's crash test dummies. We're supposed to be the <sighs> dummies today. Oh, oh, um, I don't know, Leo. I think PUBG is kind of like a roguelike. That's true. Also, Halo. Halo. Yep. When we're going to get that Halo Battle Royale, baby. We like it. <laughs> we like it. <laughs> I like that they roll at you. Yeah. All these enemies have been interesting. <laughs> Ray Lawaza says, I heard that good point. I want my Patreon money back. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Okay. Aaron J. Bayer is asking, how we liking Moon Crash? I'm liking it. And you know what? I just got a EMP charge, which I need to do my special objective. So, you know what? I'll say I'm loving it. Yeah. Only way Leo would like it more if it was an H-E-M-P charge, if you know what I mean. Because <laughs> it charges me up. Woo! Woo. <laughs> <laughs> And lo, the woos were deflated that day. Wow. Whoa, look at that. That's cool. Uh, freak out. That's weird. I like it. Shoot the guys. You're broken immediately? I think it only goes like 180 in the direction that I place it is my problem. Oh. It's trying. Yeah. We're all rooting for it. Good riddance. Mm -hmm. Angela! Wake up! Time for your Wagner! <laughs> Moonface Nick says, Evil Within 1 is my second favorite game of last gen. You guys did it dirty with the Bethesda bracket. Did we do it dirty by not playing it? You know, I mean, maybe that's the ultimate doing dirty. <laughs> We've been it. doing it dirty for years. Yeah, if we would have included it in Moonface Nick, it just would have gotten annihilated by, like, Fallout Shelter, you know? <laughs> that's not true. But, realistically, <laughs> it's, like, it's not. It wasn't worth the slam dunk on it. Uh, but hopefully we gave it its gave it its due. Right. And then it, it lost big time in the bracket on Twitter, so it's not just us. But I understand that game definitely has its fans, and it seems very cool. Hello. Are you gonna give me psi energy? Please stand clear of aperture. Fill me up. Mental resources. Yep, it gave me psi energy. Great. Like I was listening to Gangnam Style. We got jokes. Tune in for jokes. Where are the joking guys? That's a better name for the Max Patreon, Leo. It's the joking guy. <laughs> yes. <gasps> My friend's starting something new called Funny Net, which I think is a great name. That is very good. What is it? It's a streamy podcast type of thing. A bunch of shows will be wrapped up in it. 3D underscore blast on Twitch. There we go. <laughs> Big Sonic fan? Yes. <laughs> It's a good name for a game. I'll give Sonic that. He got he got that part right. Sonic's branding on point. On point. As long as that point is being thrown out to the ocean. Hmm. People talking about Pirates Online. One of the best MMOs ever. I don't know what that is. Am I missing something? Pirates of the Caribbean, The Legend of Jack Sparrow, you mean? I, is that online? No. I, I always get confused because there was a Pirates of the Caribbean game that came out like 2003. You did it! You Nine. did it! Oh. oh, they're not dead though. Uh. <laughs> you got time to celebrate though. Oh my god. Get him! Get him! Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> that was a close one. <sighs> Spooky. And did it say I automatically get a new one? Yeah, now I have to kill an etheric mimic with my wrench. Interesting, interesting. I believe in you. 
Well, we'll see if I find one before. I may get out of this heck hole. Fan on the moon. Now I've seen everything. They're fighting each other? Oh, because one of them's my friend. Get him! Get him! Oh. Get him. Leo, this is a tip in the scale. Still out here. <laughs> Let them fight! Finish him! <laughs> no! You know, that's fine, because it was gonna turn on me a minute after I... You know, if I left it alive. So it worked out great. Great? I mean, Leafeon says... That Bethesda had a Jack Sparrow game in development that never released. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not that cool to it? make unfounded claims. That's fascinating if it's true. I could see Todd Howard being a huge Jack Sparrow fan. <laughs> Wait, yeah, my god. He's not lying. Gameindustry.biz report that it was supposed to hit in 2006. Ubisoft was going to publish it. They reached an agreement with Bethesda Softworks to publish Pirates of the Caribbean The Legend of Jack Sparrow, a pirate-themed action game for the Sony, PlayStation 2, and PC. It's being developed by Seven Studios. Okay, so Bethesda wasn't developing it. That's very bizarre. All right. Guys, I cannot be stopped. He did it. He did it again. Leo, I am so Two impressed. for two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Leo, no. Okay, that's okay. Probably be okay. <laughs> that's just scary at the end. That's a really funny idea. Hey, Leo, way to go, buddy. Thanks, man. No dummy here. Smarty. Smarty, I say. So we failed in our mission, is what you're saying. I think that's correct, yes. All right, Leo, final verdict. It's fun. I will be playing more of it in my personal time. Great. And that's or a promise. Maybe on next, uh, next week's episode of New Show Plus, because people get to vote every week for what we're streaming here for New Show Plus. We could bring back Moon Crash Test Dummies. We very well could. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Gosh, every Tuesday at noon central, twitch.tv slash minmax show, we stream this fun crap. <laughs> you got it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. See ya. Every week we let Patreon supporters choose which new show we create with New Show Plus. Should we create another episode of the show you just watched? Check out the biggest new game release? Get into Sea of Thieves? Create an exercise show? It is your call. So thanks to everybody who subscribes on YouTube or supports us over on Patreon. MinMax exists because of you. As always, if you enjoy MinMax content, any help telling a friend is appreciated.